welcome back. Today I will be making a kita for Cairo since other weavers have asked me how I make it so I thought it would be a good idea to put it up here. Please be aware this is only for experienced weavers only if you have woven at least a fairy kita before but ideally if you have woven another kita for Cairo before this would be great. So numbers. Uh, for this one or my preferred version is 72 each way. 72 fenu a 5mm whip. And I do them all natural or with colour and um, today it's going to be 72 natural and 36 of a colour each, in this case turquoise and blue. And so that's going to give a nice papakirango pattern. As an experienced weaver you would have made pattern kitty before so I don't have to explain to you the numbers game. It is very important that you get the right numbers for the right pattern. And most of us will use um, a book or other kitty or some other handed down information in order to find the right numbers for our patterns. So this one, what I'm making now, will have uh, multiples of four. So I will alternate the turquoise and the blue in fours and the natural going all of them in the other way. So here we go. This is my first dextral, meaning it goes from the left to the right. And that's on the bottom, and I put the sinistral, which is the one going from the right to the left, on top. Now the important bit is you need to leave enough space at the bottom, so you can lock the bottom off for your base. So it doesn't actually need to be this much, but you can kind of vary it depending on what type of lock off you're doing. So I'm just going to alternate these now. And the whole lot is going to be in takitahi at the beginning, meaning over one, under one, just to give it a nice, sturdy starting point. So I've done my four turquoise. And now I'm going into the blue. Same sort of thing, another four, and I only weave about, depending really, about three rows up, so one, two, three, not higher than that because after that I want to get into the actual pattern. And I continue with this, alternating the blue and the turquoise in fours until I've used all my 72 in each direction up. So I'm almost at the end now. And uh, as you can see, I've alternated the blue and the turquoise in numbers of four. You might have noticed that I've got a sheet underneath here. It's just an ordinary sheet. And that, um, for once, stops the fenu to sort of get all wobbly and sliding all over the table. But also it is slightly wet because they're so narrow they tend to dry out very quickly. And then you have to spray and wet them again and eventually they will get water stains and we always need to try to avoid the water stains. So that's the, the sheet. Also, I normally have a second one handy if I do get up for a break or anything. I can cover my work so it doesn't dry out. Most weavers would use a towel. I just um, find um, a sheet much, much easier to work with. So, I'm almost ready. You might remember I started with turquoise. And now I finish with blue. So when I join the two sides, the pattern will actually work. If you happen to finish on the same color that you started with, for this particular pattern, you've done something wrong with your numbers. So you try not to do that. And I started on an over, and now I finish. 
on an under. That's important. And I'm using little bobby pins. Just this once to kind of secure the sides, especially the corners, and also along the way a little bit, because now comes the part that uh, a lot of people ask me about. I turn this whole construction, I might call it, over to lock off the bottom. So there we are. This is as far as we go, three rows up, alternating in blue and turquoise, and now I'm gonna and that's all the shiny side up, I might add. And now I'm going to turn it over. And thanks to those little bobby pins, nothing falls out of place. And what I do now is I lock the bottom off. That makes it easier when I join it so the whole kitty doesn't fall apart. And that's just a simple double or sometimes I do even a triple lock off, depending on how much space I've got. So just as you would do in any other kitty essentially, I just build up. Build up to, or well, I might just do a, a triple on this one because I've got enough length. Been very generous this time around. Right here, here we are. So this is my three, so this is going to be a triple lock off, not just a double. And just like your normal open double. You're just going to lock it off. So this is going to be your base. It's a bit tricky to get them. And sometimes you need to, like this one is a bit short. Pull a little bit so it fits all in, but that's essentially what it is. I do like a little triple lock off all the way, all the way to the other side, and then I turn it back over. So now I've done the lock off, a triple as mentioned before. So I've got one side looking like that, and then sort of go along and nice and straight. That's the important bit, and finish off like this with my little bobby pins. So they just keep it in place for time being and uh, go, I'm going to turn this back over onto the shiny side because the pattern is going to woven, going to be woven on the shiny side. So turn it over back on the shiny side. It looks pretty wide down the bottom but be aware that about half of this width down here will be at the actual base of your kitty. So it needs to be quite wide if you want it to be you know, flat base so you can stand it on. So what I do now is I just turn the whole lot over to start my pattern. And at the beginning they're quite long and they might actually stay where I want them to stay. But I still, if they're long when they get shorter, I just put a, a towel or, you know, something so they stay down there for the time being and it's easy to drag them out so clearly i can't do the pattern on this side because they're already in the takitahi so they will have to be done when i'm join joining the kitty so and i do know that the last one of this color is an over three so at the moment it just goes over two so we're starting our pattern with the turquoise and the pattern actually reads, the number one is over one and under three. Obviously, we only have two at the first slot, so there's not much what we can do about that. <laughs> the second one, hang on, this way, is over one, over one, under one, over one, under two. Now, we haven't got the two yet, so we just turn that one back. The next slot... The third is over two, under two, over one, so that already works. And the one after that is over three, under three, over one, under one. So we get to the full pattern in the next sequence. But basically that's how you start it. You need to start somewhere. So this one now should work. So again, over one, 
under 3, over 3. So we're still missing one of this one. So the next one is over 1, under 1, over 1, under 2, over 2, under 1. So now we've got the full pattern right there. And I mean, I don't have to, but I tend to put a little bobby pin where the pattern finishes. It just gives me a bit of a guideline. And then the next one is over two, under two, over one, under one, over one, there it is, under one. And last but not least, over three, under three, over one, under one. So that way, you've got your full set of pattern. I'll tighten it as I go. And you've got your ara up here. So the idea is to continue this, and I go up uh, four, five, sometimes even six rows of pattern. And every single time you have to start working out how the side works. And then it just flows from there. So you read the pattern from bottom to top or right to left, but you actually weave it from top to bottom. That way you always keep your other and you can just make it flow as it were. So you just, you know, once you've got the pattern in your head, it just goes like magic. Any pattern for that matter. There are a few that are complicated, but this one is one of the easier and still striking ones. So now I've finished my first row of pattern. You can clearly see the ara which finishes on a takitahi, and I'm going to be doing probably about four or five rows of this on top of each other before I join. Now I know that some weavers join as early as possible, I join as late as possible, so I can weave most of the pattern flat on the table before I join it. I find uh, the tension stays much better than if I try it any other way, but Whichever way you prefer is probably working for you. Um, this works for me. So now I've done my five rows of pattern. So one, two, three, four, five. And I've already locked uh, the last little bit that I had at the top. I've done just a simple double lock off. So that way, when I join it, I don't have a problem of uh, all these fenu falling out that I lose. If I already locked them off top and bottom, what I can saves me time after.